Anytime you build a rock wall, anytime you build a structure, you need sturdy foundations. If one is not in line with the rest, the rest fall apart. The kane in the home is that foundation. He needs to be strong. If he's not strong, I'm sorry to say, but the family falls apart. For the longest time, we've believed the myths that Hawaiian males are not smart, are not educated. Hawaiian culture is not something that you need to learn. Hawaiian language is a dead language that no one speaks. This is part of the myth that is out there. And I think it affects Hawaiian men a lot more because we've been conditioned to think that our role is to provide for the family. Our role is to go to work, make money, and that's it. We have to look at our role within society and see whether or not there is a challenge out there for us to take upon so that we can take our roles to the next level, so that we can become more than just the provider, more than just the person going out and working every day. We can take an active role in the education of our kids, not only with Western education, but also with Hawaiian education, with understanding the role of men. In our more recent history, there's really been the feeling that men have been missing in the Hawaiian community. Some of that, I think, is a misperception because we've always had men that have been active in different ways. Um, but some of that is based in reality, where you, you have such high rates of men incarcerated or dying young. And for a lot of them, they were looking for a place that they could express their identities, their who they are as Hawaiians in a way that was comfortable for them. Ahakane, Native Hawaiian Men's Health Conference, has been one of the, the few places where a really broad spectrum of men have been made aware. Here's a place where we can come to be Hawaiian men. The opening ceremony protocol for the conference was all about reconnecting to our kupuna and understanding that in today's society of technology and fast pace, that we really need to take time to reflect on who we are and regain a sense of spirit and self-confidence to move forward. <laughs> The deity Ku, a lot of people understand as the god of war, but I think this is really not seeing the entirety of what Ku is. Ku is the god of industry, of work, of labor, of productivity. Ku is the primal male deity. In the stories, he's paired with Hina, the woman, and the two of them represent the balance that is needed for the universe to be in a state of pono. The sense that the ku is missing really is a good metaphor of the men being missing in society. Um, and if we think about these particular images that had gone away, they're now returning is also marking a return of men in taking up their kuleana, their roles and responsibilities. One of the premises of Ahakani is we can achieve well-being as well as good health by looking to our cultural heritage. We're not just talking physical health, but we're also talking about emotional, spiritual well-being and a sense of who you are as a kanaka, as a person. And for me, and Ahakane, it is about this preparation of that Hawaiian kane kuleana and doing it publicly now. And, and getting other kane involved. A 
lot of times people will say, well, you seem to be excluding the wahine or the, the females, and uh, we're actually not. We're making our contribution back to the wahines uh, in a positive manner by making the Kanis realize what their roles are so they can be a better father and a better husband. <laughs> There's a wealth of research background that has tried to solve uh, a lot of the problems facing our people from a Western mindset. Ahakane is about looking to our foundation as Native peoples and beginning to solve it from a Kanaka Hawaiian perspective. These are the connections that we need to make to the land, to the ocean, to each other, to the heavens. That's the emotional well-being we talk about, but the process of reconnecting becomes the, the healing process for the, the mind, the body, and the spirit. That becomes sort of the mound of the bait that triggers the interest in the kane and begins to help them on that path of renewed self-consciousness as a Hawaiian person. The basic intent is for the kane to take care of himself so he can take care of his family, so he can extend it out and take care of his community. Right? That's the basis and things. You know, start with yourself first. I mean, look at, look at the health screening. I mean, the amount of guys that are in there, they heard, they listened, I got to take care of myself. Health is a product of both our own kuleana, but also that we need to think of a larger historical context. But there's a lot of things that have been beyond our control that continue to affect our health from the overthrow, Captain Cook's arrival and depopulation, alienation from land. These events actually have affected and continue to affect our health and have produced or at least contributed to disparities in diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, cancer. Most Hawaiian men uh, hesitate going to the doctors. Well, it could be financial because they may not have insurance. Uh, it could be just stubbornness. But uh, when they get here and they, they see how easy it is and how friendly the, the screeners are, I think it sends a message to them that they can go back and start uh, a new habit of going and seeing a doctor to keep their health better. Because the healthier they are and the better off they are, the, the healthier their families are. It's building men and building them to be productive, meaningful partners in their homes and in their communities. And using the Hawaiian culture as the medium to accomplish this makes it even more meaningful. No matter which presentation you go into, it has application. The food that our kupuna taught us had a lot of power. We, as Hawaiian male, need to tell our family what we ought to be doing. And it's based on a very Hawaiian concept. And it is body, soul, and spirit. Hawaiians look at ourselves not as just one thing, just this physical being. We look at that as being important, the, the body, if you may say, this physical being. So we need to take care of that. Uh, we need to exercise, we need to eat properly. All the limu that uh, we're very familiar with, all the fishes that we're very familiar with. Although Hawaii is considered the healthiest state in the nation, we as Hawaiians doesn't fare as well. And we know that one of the major problems is what we eat. And that's what I know best. Taro, ulu, sweet potato. It's all within the same category of complex carbohydrate. You know, the oatmeal that you're eating, that uh, Cheerios and all of that, fall all in the same category. But we don't need to go there. Taro, ulu, sweet potato. It's godlike, actually. That's how powerful it is. That's how powerful our breakfast is. Oh, wow.
Each and every one of us contains the DNA of our ancestors. They're going to guide you. Go out in a field, kanu. That's your ike. If you don't exercise it, it's not going to come out. Lomi Lomi is a concept in well-being, incorporating good thoughts as well as good deeds, proper protocols and mannerism. Lomi Lomi comes from an ancient art of lua and grappling. And sometimes when you see people do Lomi Lomi, it really does look like we're having a fight. When you crack open the knot, the knot cleaning, purging, building, cleansing the blood. The lao has a purpose of that. The herbs are the ones being recognized with a duty, a divine right to heal. As we kahuna initiate that kuleana and give back the initial role that the plants have and the world has to us, we realize that respect. That's the mana and that's what heals. So we gotta return back to that concept to Malama Aina right here. This is the land we gotta take care of. We're this nation of one, Malama first. Then we can go back and start all the other endeavors. Without the health, there's no way you can complete all of the tasks at hand. When they come to Ho'oponopono, that's what's gonna happen. Husband and wife come in with a different perspective. So the object of Ho'oponopono is to make both of them see two sides now. And after you make the connection, the hardest part is to walk the walk. The reward in the end is gonna benefit the children. Too often we look outside ourselves to put blame on others, yeah? I'm in this position because so-and-so did this or so-and-so never do this. So what about yourself? What did you do? What didn't you do? Okay? So you got to look at yourself. To make changes take time. Yeah, take time. So when they come here, they go receive knowledge. And then they go out and they go apply. But maybe 20, 30 years from now, they're going to come to a situation that they have remembered the aha on, on this day. Yeah. And then they're going to apply. You know, Lua is basically a defensive art. If you are a hothead, tempered, what have you, they did not teach you. Because in that decision upon when you see a stimulus and you attack, your mind had to be clear. When I hit you in the stomach or heart, I will hit you with enough vibrating pressure and turn and move to break the ribs, to send them into your heart, into your lungs, pneumothorax. You'll bleed to death. The Hawaiians use primarily shock, nerves, dislocations, breaking of the bones. So if he throws his left, all you have to do is come. If you come down low, you can hit the groin. If you come down, you can hit center section. Or if you're coming, you can just go right through. So primarily, all you're doing is using the different infinity or figure eight movement. Okay, like I said, a good fight, three to five seconds. That's it. Hawaiian men don't like do hula because they think it's too soft. Yeah? And you'd rather do lua than hula. And to me, that's sad. That's really sad because before there was no division. There was an understanding that they came from the same sources. There is room for lua in the world, even with hula. There is room for lavaia, for farming, for every aspect of our culture. You see, walk around the arts, the crafts, the knowledge, the genealogy, the everything. There is room for that. Let's have some fun. You never want to shoot with your hands down like this and try to grab one leg. You want to learn how to change levels like this, okay? If you don't change levels and you're standing too straight up, he's going to just take me down. So the main thing I teach or train fighters is never to stand too far up in an MMA fight. Touch, and the knee come right up. So your knee, brother, just go like this. Point up like this, and when you land, you got to land like this. Don't land flat-footed. Turning up the head like this. I train all my life in the martial arts. I paid my dues training people and being as a fighter, being a world champion, doing all of that. But the whole thing is, there's more to life than that. 
especially being Hawaiian and helping another Hawaiian achieve a world championship. To me, it's helping them that is more important than my fame and my glory. To see them, you know, influence other people, you know, that's, to me, that's more, more important than what I've done and, you know, and that, that's how I mentor guys. I try and help them be the best they can. It's not only the fighting world, it's also later in life, you know, by teaching them how to work hard, teaching them the right values so they can apply it to their family life. You know, life is, sometimes it's up, so everything is super happy, and then, and then it's down. And, and, you know, I know we all felt it and we all been through it all the time, but that's it, that's what, that's what makes a man, how he stands up, you know, at the end of the day, how he stands up and gets off his feet because, you know, we all get knocked down, you know, all, all the time, daily, weekly, in everything, and, and you just keep pushing through one foot in front of the other. I really think it's, it's, it's important you know, to have other people above you motivating you and telling you how good you're doing because it's easy to forget, you know what I mean, in, in, this, in this, tough, this tough world of everything going on. Put your egos away, in, not, not, not only martial arts, but in everything, man, because what is the future if, you know, of Hawaii if you don't share? That, that's what my parents taught me, a law of spirit, give and no expect nothing. We all sitting down over here in this circle right over here and we actually turning like that. We turning that way. Yeah, but yeah we turning towards Hikina. Yeah, but I know, I know how the world is turning because... Pono e homaki ka pai haumana iki ana he ala ke la kamea nui holoe hana hana a hana mau ka lilo ana i ala kai ali ke la he ala pukole ano lo ihi loa Ano loa ka wā lana kila, o yaku ka nui o ka wā piholo. Po is to be a light to your community. It is about being a steward, it's about being a servant. It had nothing really to do about how many sea trails you knew or how many stars you had in your repertoire. All the other important information or skill sets you have to possess to be recognized on that canoe as being competent. That's part of it, but the essential part was that you are a light and a leader to your community. So when we contemplate what does that mean to us, fundamentally it's pretty simple. One, you got to sail. And one, you got to teach the values that you believe in. And that's about education. So in many ways, it's simple. We need to sail, but we need to pass the sailing on to younger generations. Look, a home of Coco Anna, a Kanaka AI. Pono oe, Dilu Ila Anna Yala, who Ike, Kiano, Kanaka, Oyoi, Kalakai, Okela, Hehana, Noka Ola, Lo Ihi. Ali Loa Kikai, Palena Pau, a holo, 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 a Higala, a why we do this really is so that we can get the children younger and younger. Ready on your sheet lines. Alu, Alu, open it up. So that one day they will be in those tide pools. So that one day they will be trained from that age. And that one day we really will have someone that we may be able to pass on Paul to that will walk in the same footstep as Mao. When you look at someone like Papa Mao Piailu, when he was asked, he took the challenge with his crew of some young Hawaiians to go on that journey to disprove the naysayers. Papa Mao knew. And his words are one of the greatest quotes ever. If I have courage, it's because I have faith in the teachings of my ancestors. We as a people, uh, um, I think we're driven now. 
and removing things. You know, it's a it's a perpetual motion sort of thing that that yeah we're we're a part of it and things, but it's bigger than all of us. It's not about us. It's not about our county. It's about us as a people, and I think everybody's uh, spirit and their their own connection to their own kupuna is making it happen. How are you going to answer to your ancestors when it's time for all of us to meet them? Will they be happy with what you've done? Mm-hmm.